Hi everybody, this is Hana with Team Elite where we inspire you to dream big and go bold. We are here with our Think and Grow Rich series, specifically our live audiobook series. We are on chapter number two, Desire. We are doing our last video. This is video number six in chapter two. So Vahid, let's get into it guys. He's going to be doing commentary for us. So anything through the book that needs further explanation, the expert's going to be giving it to you guys. Good seeing you, Hana. Let's dive into it. Okay. And this is page number 44 of this version of the book. Hardly realizing the significance of what had already been accomplished by intoxicated with the joy of his newly discovered world of sound, he wrote a letter to the manufacturer of the hearing aid enthusiastically describing his experience. Something in his letter, something perhaps which was not written on the lines but back of them, caused the company to invite him to New York. When he arrived, he was escorted through the factory, and while talking with the chief engineer, telling him about his changed world, a hunch, an idea, or an inspiration, call it what you wish, flashed into his mind. It so was this is the, the father refusing to believe that my son cannot speak and cannot hear. Mm -hmm. Now he, he is, he's come in the position, 18 years later, he's come into the position of an equipment that actually allows him to be able to do that. So the company invites him over there. Now this is an opportunity for what? For you to be able to take it to the next mm -hmm. level. Maybe a business ende endeavor together, opportunity for you to work with them, be the spokesperson, and we're going to go through the story. But it, it just happens, it comes out of nowhere. Hmm. It was this impulse of thought which converted his affliction into an asset, destined to pay dividends in both money and happiness to thousands for all time to come. The sum and substance of that impulse of thought was this. It occurred to him that he might be of help to millions of deafened people who go through life without the benefit of hearing devices if he could find a way to tell them the story of his changed world. Then and there, he reached the decision to devote the remainder of his life to rendering useful service to the hard of hearing. For an entire month, he carried on an intensive research during which he analyzed the entire marketing system of the manufacturer of the hearing device and created ways and means of communicating with the hard of hearing all over the world for the purpose of sharing them with his newly discovered changed world. When this was done, he put in writing a two-year plan based upon his findings. When he presented the plan to the company, he was instantly given a position for the purpose of carrying out this ambition. Hmm. So he wrote down a two-year plan, and that's how he got the job. Mm -hmm. So it's th that's why we kept emphasizing chapter two. You got to write down your idea, your plan, your strategy. You definitely got to put it on a piece of paper. Mm -hmm. It goes in your mind. You got to put it on a piece of paper and reread it to yourself. Elaborate on it. Adjust it if need to be. But those processes, you can't get away without not doing it. So you, th it's very, very essential for us to be able to put the plan in place. Mm -hmm. Read it. And, and, and write it on a piece of paper where you can remind yourself of it in a further, you know, later future. So if you come up with an idea and we write it down, it's, it's the purpose of when you write it down, you can go back again because you were in that state of mindset, emotionally being high, focus, your burning desire was at the peak. So you wrote those plans while that feeling was there. So you reviewing it is shifting you back to that feeling. It brings all those feelings back. So this is how we kind of bring ourselves back to that moment where we're like, okay, this is what I need to do. And when we have setbacks, that's how we reset ourselves to go back into the positive mindset. Mm. Little did he dream when he went to work that he was destined to bring hope and practical relief to thousands of deafened people who, without his help, would have been doomed forever to death mutism. Shortly after he became associated with the manufacturer of his hearing aid, he invited me to attend a class conducted by his company for the purpose of teaching deaf mutes to hear and to speak. I had never heard of such a form of education. Therefore, I visited the class, skeptical but hopeful that my time would not be entirely wasted. Here I saw a demonstration which gave me a greatly enlarged vision of what I had done to arouse and keep alive in my son's mind the desire of normal hearing. I saw deaf mutes actually being taught to hear and to speak through application of the self-same principle I had used more than 20 years previously in saving my son from deaf mutism. Thus, through some strange turn of the wheel of fate, my son Blair and I have been destined to aid in correcting deaf mutism for those uh, yet unborn 
because we are the only living human beings, as far as I know, who have established definitely the fact that deaf mutism can be corrected to the extent of restoring to normal life those who suffer with this affliction. It has been done for one, it can be done for Twice. others. Hmm. Very, very important. And that's why it, it took 20 years. But Hannah, just to, just to recap on that, imagine if these two individuals wouldn't have gone through that. Mm -hmm. Imagine that how many more other people with that condition would today not be having a normal lifestyle because they didn't know about this or someone didn't go out of their way to make that a burning desire. Yeah. Everything that you and I possess as far as material world, everything we do, at one point it was the imagination of somebody and then that person had the burning desire to bring that to the real world. Go from, a, from, a, from an idea on a piece of paper, drawing, getting it through the patent you know, office and be able to pr produce that product that you and I use today. Mm -hmm. Very powerful. There is no doubt in my mind that Blair would have been de uh, deaf mute all his life if his mother and I did not manage to shape his mind as well as we did. The doctor who attended at his birth told us confidently the child might never hear or speak. A few weeks ago, Dr. Irving Voorhees, a noted specialist on such cases, examined Blair very thoroughly. He was astounded when he learned how well my son now hears and speaks and said his examination indicated that theoretically the boy should not have been able to hear at all but the lad does theoretically mm -hmm. so now you define that you're going against all odds the but the lad does hear despite the fact that x-ray pictures show there is no opening in the skull whatsoever from where his ear should be to the brain when i planted in his mind the desire to hear and talk and live as a normal person, there went with that impulse some strange influence which caused nature to become bridge builder and span the gulf of silence between his brain and the outer world by some means which the keenest medical specialists have not been able to interpret. Hmm. It would be sacrilege for me to even conjecture, conjecture as to how nature performed this miracle. It would be unforgivable if I neglected to tell the world as much as I know of the humble part I assumed in the strange experience. It is my duty and privilege to say I believe, and not without reason, that nothing is impossible to the person who backs desire with enduring faith. Mm. So you gotta have faith, burning desire. A burning desire backed by faith, nobody can stop you. Might take some time, there might be some delay, there might be some temporary defeat, there might be some challenges. But you definitely are gonna, you are on your way to succeed because you have that burning desire and you're backing it up with a very strong belief that comes from within. It's not an exter external thing, yeah. it's an internal thing. So if you believe in it, the universe is gonna repay you. Sometimes it takes a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. Verily, a burning desire has devious ways of transmuting itself into its physical equivalent. Blair desired normal hearing, now he has it. He was born with a handicap which might easily have sent one with a less defined desire to the street with a bundle of pencils and a tin cup. That handicap now promises to serve as the medium by which he will render useful service to many millions of hard of hearing also to give him useful employment at adequate financial compensation the remainder of his life. The little white lies I planted in his mind when he was a child by leading him to believe his affliction would become a great asset which he could capitalize has justified itself. Verily there is nothing right or wrong which belief plus burning desire cannot make real. So what are we talking about white lies there? <laughs> These qualities are free. What are we talking about? The, what does that mean? The, the little things that you say that right now they're not... You have to say to somebody own. else or can it be to yourself? To yourself. You can Why? tell to yourself. Because you need to brainwash yourself to get rid of those Sometimes Exactly. Beliefs. Sometimes you're not hearing it from other people, mm -hmm. but you do need to hear it. Yeah. So maybe it comes from your own mouth to your own ear, right? You're hearing it. Wow, I'm very good looking. Oh, I deserve this promotion. Wow, I, I do deserve this mansion. Wow, I deserve this much income. You kind of got to give yourself some of those white lies also, too, to build up your, your immune system for not quitting and throwing the towel in. Hmm. So that's how you kind of brainwash yourself for success. But h h what do you mean by brainwashing yourself? Sometimes you need to hear that. If you have good set of influence, you're going to hear it from them, right? Yeah. But if you don't even have it, you're still looking for those good influences, you could do it to yourself. 
in all my experience in dealing with men and women who had personal problems, I never handled a single case which more definitely demonstrates the power of desire. Authors sometimes make the mistake of writing of subjects of which they have but been uh, superficial or very elementary in knowledge. It has been my good fortune to have had the privilege of testing the soundness of the power of desire through the affliction of my own son. Perhaps it was pro uh, providential that the experience came as it did, for surely no one is better prepared than he has to serve as an example of what happens when desire is put to the test. Mm -hmm. If Mother Nature bends to the will of desire, it is logical that mere men can defeat a burning desire. Strange and imponderable is the power of the human mind. We do not understand the method by which it uses every circumstance, every individual, every physical thing within its reach as a means of transmuting desire into its physical counterpart. Mm -hmm. Perhaps science will uncover the secret. I planted in my son's mind the desire to hear and to speak as any normal person hears and speaks. That desire has now become a reality. I planted in his mind the desire to convert his greatest handicap into his greatest asset. That desire has been realized. The modus operandi by which this astounding result has achieved, was achieved is not hard to describe. It consisted of ve uh, three very definite facts. First, I mixed faith with the desire of normal hearing, which I passed on to my son. Second, I communicated my desire to him in every conceivable way possible, through persistence, continuous effort over a period of years. Third, he believed me. At this chapter, at, so as those are three things. Yeah. Very self-explanatory, but you have that. As this chapter was being completed, news came of the death of M. Schumann Heike. One short paragraph in the news dispatch gives the clue to this unusual woman's stupendous success as a singer. I quote the paragraph because the clue it contains is none other than desire. Early in her career, M. Schumann Heike visited the director of Vienna Court Opera to have him test her voice, but he did not test it. After taking one look at the awkward and poorly dressed girl, he examined none too gently. <laughs> with such a face and with no personality at all, how can you ever expect to uh, succeed in opera? My good child, give up the idea. By, uh, buy a sewing machine and go to work. You can never be a singer. Harsh. <laughs> never is a long time. Don't ever tell a determined person that they can't do it or mm -hmm. they can't have it. Because that's just going to fuel yeah. their mind. The, you, you, you're putting, you're putting 100%, uh, you, you're feeling their, their, their vision and their burning desire. That's, uh, that's, that's actually the fastest way of them become. By you discouraging them from doing the thing that they want to do, you're actually refueling them, you're adding more gas to the fire, and they're going to do it sooner just to prove you that they could, yeah. they're capable of doing it. That's being hard-headed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Never is a long time. The director of the Vienna Court Opera knew much about the technique of singing. He knew little about the power of desire mm. when it assumes the proportion of an obsession. If he had known more of that power, he would not have made the quick mistake of condemning genius without giving it an opportunity. Several years ago, one of my business associates became ill. He became worse as time went on and finally was taken to the hospital for an operation. Just before he was wheeled into the operating room, I took a look at him and wondered how anyone as thin and emaciated as he could possibly go through a major operation successfully. The doctor warned me that there was very little chance if me I ever seeing him alive again. But that was the doctor's opinion. It was not the opinion of the patient. Just before he was wheeled away, he whispered feebly, Do not be disturbed, chief. I will be out of here in a few days. The attending nurse looked at me with pity, but the patient did come through safely. After it was all over, the, his physician said nothing but his own desire to live saved him. He never would have pulled through if he had not refused to accept the possibility of death. I believe in the power of desire backed by faith because I have seen this power lift men from lowly beginnings to places of power and wealth. I have seen it rob the grave of its victims. I have seen it serve as the medium by which men staged a comeback after having been defeated in a hundred different ways. Burning I have seen desire backed by faith. Burning desire backed. This, is, this will be our sixth video. Yeah. And this is the whole entire point. Mm -hmm. Burning desire backed with faith. I have seen it provide my own son with a normal, happy, successful life, despite nature's having sent him into the world without ears. How can one harness and use the power of desire? This has been answered through this and the subsequent chapters of this book. 
This message is going out to the world at the end of the longest and perhaps the most devastating depression America has ever known. It is reasonable to presume that the message may come to the attention of many who have been wounded by the depression, those who have lost their fortunes, others who have lost their positions, and great numbers who must reorganize their plans and stage a comeback. To all of these, I wish to convey that the thought that all achievement, no matter what may be its nature or its purpose, must begin with an intense, burning desire for something definite. Through some strange and powerful principle of mental chemistry, which she has never divulged, nature wraps up in the impulse of strong desire that something which recognizes no such word as impossible and accepts no such reality as failure. That's how it goes. So you, you back that up. And, and listen, Hannah, it's very, very important. I know a lot of people are watching this. Yeah. You don't need to know how it works. You don't need to know all the... We don't have to wait for science to prove this based on absolute facts. Yes. We have enough results that indicate that this is a fact. If you have burning desire, if you truly desire something and you want to do it, again, I'm mentioning now without violating anybody's right. Mm -hmm. If you put in the work, plan, strategy, and, and, and have your teamwork going on, you will be able to accomplish that. Now, I, again, I'm repeating myself, is sometimes it might take a little bit of time, sometimes it takes a couple of years for you to do that, sometimes it might take 10 years, but eventually you're gonna get there. It's so, so important not to throw the towel in. It's so important that go through the temporary defeat without loss of any enthusiasm, excitement, or any of your desire, cannot go. And in between, just to wrap up this chapter, Anna, mm -hmm. in between, you're going to come across a lot of dream stealers. Yeah. Make sure you block those out. You do not need any negative. Avoid negative people at all costs possible. Mm -hmm. Even if you have to block, you're sitting there, but you're not paying attention to them, that's what you got to do. It's a skill, it's a habit that's going to serve you tremendously if you are able to block out negative individuals. Definitely. Just stick to what you did. You planted your flag. Go all, go go through with it. That's it. And and know this. It's a fact. You're gonna come on the other side victorious, and you're gonna win, and you're gonna make a lot of money. So stick to it. I know there's a lot of a uh, lot of turbulences that come across, but those people that make it big uh, don't don't pay attention to those things, and no. they stick with their goals. No. And and speaking of that, guys. You know, we are going to be doing chapter number three. That's going to be faith. That's going to be really exciting to go right. through. And he just, uh, but he just touched on something, guys. You know, it's all about who you surround yourself with, and that's what we're creating right now. You know, we have our own circle of of people who are like minded, business minded, very motivated. So, you know, if you guys have any questions, concerns, comments about what it is that we're doing. Definitely let us know in the comments below. Like, subscribe, so you're following us. In touch, we're Team Elite, as well as Napoleon Dot Hill. Also, if you like anybody else that you think that's dear to your heart, and they need to hear these materials, yeah. definitely share it with them. Uh, obviously, you know that's how I got introduced to Thinking Go Rich mm -hmm. by Napoleon Hill, and so did the rest of my organization. So definitely, if you're out there, share. Yeah. You never know how it's going to impact somebody's life. That's very true. All right, guys, we'll see you for the next time. We're looking forward to it. Chapter number three, faith. Take care. Goodbye.